the Plumbing Marketing Profits Podcast. Interviews with Million Dollar Plus plumbing and HVAC business owners on how they market and grow their companies in today's economy. Hear directly from the most successful leaders in your business and discover what they are doing to keep their phone ringing, trucks running, and businesses booming. With your host, Josh Nelson. Well, welcome and thank you for joining us on this episode of the Plumbing and HVAC Marketing Show. I am so excited to be here with Greg Joyce today, doing something a little bit different. We're actually on location in Allentown, Pennsylvania. Got to spend the day with Greg and his team and his operation, and I'm really just so excited to share um, kind of what he's doing to market himself and grow his company. Uh, this is also a special episode because this is our third time, probably over the last three years, interviewing Greg. Maybe five, maybe it's almost like a four or five year span, what do you think? Yeah, I think it is. I think you're right, about five years. Exactly. And uh, we've been able to, to have these interviews and he's grown significantly, which we'll be talking about. But what, what's cool is you can hear kind of how his marketing strategy has changed. And depending upon where you're at in your company, you might go back to the episode three years ago and say, what was he doing then? And you know, how can I tap into some of those ideas and strategies? So thank you so much for joining us on the show again, Greg. You're welcome. I'm, uh, Pleased to be here. This is great. And uh, for your willingness to share, you know, not everybody's comfortable going on camera or going even on a on a on a podcast and sharing what's working for them. So I really appreciate how how generous you are in spirit and, and your willingness to share what you're doing and what's working for you. My pleasure. My pleasure. So before we dive in, just tell us a little bit about yourself in the high level, uh, up to date. Where are you at as a company? How many trucks? Approximate revenue? Some of that fun stuff. Sure. Sure. A little bit about myself. Um, my background, I um, went to a trade school back in the 80s, uh, came working here at Schuler Service in 86, um, worked in the truck from 86 to 2005 and became a service manager in 2005. Um, always working for my father all along and then in 2013, um, after service manager for eight years, I purchased the business back in 2013. Um, as far as where we're at with the company, uh, we did some uh, considerable growth um, since the uh, acquisition of the company. Um, basically, we were a two million dollar uh, business, and at the moment, we're we're on target for to be a three and a half million dollar business this year. So, Fantastic. we're real excited about that and proud of that. And uh, a lot of the growth is uh, come from just a different type of the way we're running the business. Um, obviously, marketing website that the Plumber SEO has uh, created for us, and the optimization that they do on an everyday basis, um, along with the PPC campaign. Um, along with some some branding, we did a lot of branding, wrapping the trucks. We did some billboards, some TV, some we're doing some radio currently. Um, so there are some different uh, medias that we're, we're we're searching out. But uh, all in all, the, the main thing is, and I, and really what it comes down to in our industry as plumbers, you need to be uh, present online, you know, and you need to do your your online marketing. And uh, Josh and his team, I can't say enough about them. They do a fantastic job for us, and that's a real integral and part of our growth here. Oh, well, thank, thank, you. thank you for saying that. And so, so about a million and a half dollars in revenue growth over the last, you know, five years or so. Mm -hmm. And about how many technicians, how many trucks do you have in the field today? Um, there's about nine. Uh, we fluctuate because, you know, one may leave and come. Uh, but on average for this year, uh, we, we, we're about nine technicians. Okay. We, could, we could use about three more right now. Though. All right. <laughs> so that, that ever, evergreen challenge of how do we find good guys, how do we get them placed, yep. how do we keep them engaged and, and doing good work. Yep. But um, that, that's awesome. And congratulations on your, your continued growth. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it's ex exciting. So what, what we want to drill down on today's episode is, is kind of the, the, the marketing strategy that's working for you. And you said internet's a big piece of it, but there's a lot of things that, that Greg does really well um, in his business structure, in his marketing strategy, and in his branding. And really, I've always said that, that marketing boils down to three key elements. First is your, your, your market, really being clear on who your customer is so that you can craft the message that positions yourself uniquely to that market, and then the media that you use to get that message to that market. And so we want to talk about all three of those things in a little bit of detail. So let's start with your, let's start with your market. Like, who do you guys identify as your ideal customer and the people that you serve that you really go after in your marketing? 
Well, you know, the ideal customer is any customer that uh, calls us. I mean, <laughs> uh, I know it sounds ridiculous, but it, it, that is the truth. However, we do target certain areas. Um, yeah. that, that's that's big, even in the SEO, you know, or the, or the PPC campaign. We, we definitely target different areas. If it's the McCungie area, the Allentown area, of course, is our major market because this is where we are in Allentown. But um, to really answer the question, I guess, is if you're asking the type of customer that we go after, um, if it's an age group or demographic, uh, you know, it's tough because, you know, you do all kinds of studies. I've had an um, a independent um, marketing firm come in here and, and say, okay, what kind of customer are you looking for? Mm -hmm. And I always laugh. I say, yeah, one that makes the phone ring or one that's going to uh, pay. Money. Exactly, one that pays us, basically. But, you know. What we found is um, the the age group. It does seem like you know that mid forty mark up till you know the the, the, the retirement age is, is sort okay. of our our age group that we we tend to target when it comes to direct mail, for for instance. Um, so, and of course, when we do direct mail, we go for um, we'll even target high income properties. So, okay. um, which which works quite well. So, hope that answers the question. Yeah, it does. So, so it's it's homeowners, it's uh, people kind of in their forty plus mm -hmm. in your particular market. Yep. Um, it's uh, Definitely homeowners, that's for sure. Uh, homeowners, yeah. okay, mm -hmm. excellent. And, and you find that with direct mail, you can you can laser target that audience. We can, um, and then with your your messaging, you can kind of say, look, if that's who we sell to, let's let's make sure we're positioning ourselves in a way that resonates with that customer. Absolutely. And that kind of leads us to the second question, which is, how do you position yourself uniquely? Like, why does somebody choose Schuler Service versus the competition? Well, first of all, I think, um, you know, a little bit of bias here. I, I think we're, we're the best, of course, but I mean, world-class service. I mean, we preach customer service every week. Um, we train every Wednesday morning religiously for an hour. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of it is about customer service. It's not just on sales. It's how are we treating our customers? How are we treating that uh, customer with the utmost respect for their home? You know, from the simple stuff. Everybody wears booties now, but you know, it's 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 how you present yourself um, with the embroidered rug at the front door, the booties, um, and even backing up a little bit. It starts with training, even on the phone with our, with our with our CSRs, our mm -hmm. customer service representatives. You know, they need to know how to, to to treat that customer with the utmost respect. We call it a wow call. We wow them over the phone before we even before we even book the call. So nice. those are the kinds of things that we 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 stand out. I think from our competition. Um, this. Uh, from from the time the phone rings to how we answer the phone to the showroom that we have here. Um, to, for, so if people need to see any product that we uh, recommend for replacement, they could come in here and pick out some product. Um, to just, you know, the, the same day service, the uniform text, um, the train text. I, mean, I could go down a laundry list of, of, of items, but that's how we put ourselves ahead of our competition. So Awesome. So just positioning yourself as the quality service provider that's going to be available, mm -hmm. that can show up same day or next day in most cases. Um, and that, that's how you can resonate with that 40 plus audience yep. homeowners that you, that you work with. Sure. Which, which really leads us to the next thing, which is the media. And that's what everyone likes to talk about is like, what types of things are you doing uh, to get that message in front of that audience and to get the phones ringing and to keep the trucks running? So let's just talk, I know you have a really cool and diverse marketing mix. Let's talk about the different marketing techniques that you have in play. Sure, Josh. Yeah, absolutely. Um, let's start with direct mail. I mean, something that I honestly um, thought really never worked, but um, we do a lot of direct mail with our customer base. To the um, existing customers, Existing customer base. Not yeah. any, like, just direct mail door, you know, every door direct mail right. type stuff. And we've started that, actually. This year is the first time we started that okay. um, because we were doing a uh, re-grand opening of our showroom. So I decided to do some direct mail where we send out 5,000 mailers each month for I'm doing it for a full year here to basically the 5,000 highest income properties, um, you know, people with the highest incomes in the Lehigh Valley. Nice. Um, and we've had some good response, you know. Um, so we do track everything. Uh, but the, so direct mail is, is, is uh, certainly a part of our marketing campaign. Um, and, but again, a lot of it is focused on the present customer. So mm -hmm. um, we, when we do gain a customer, we also send direct mail in, in the form of a thank you letter, which is huge nice. because right now there's a coupon right away they could use. Mm -hmm. We thank them again and again and again. Every time we do a, a job for any customer, uh, it is, we, we send a thank you letter out. And Greg so, showed me this uh, the last time I was here. Uh, it's a physical thank you card that goes out with a... Uh, like a little gift card, hey, thanks, mm -hmm. and um, you know, it's like a twenty-five dollars off your next yep. service for a friends or family. Yep, um, exactly. Yeah, and, and then a thing, a great it, touch to just put your arms around the customer after you get them, and and create that that wow experience. So they want to do business with you again and refer you. Yep, absolutely, and you know, 
customer retention, and then Josh taught me this uh, by actually uh, through one of his colleagues um, set me up with this, but with the customer retention is so important. You, when you grab that customer, we all know how much it costs to get that customer, so why would you forget about them after you work for them the first time? So you want to stay in front of them all the time. So direct mail is really our avenue to try to stay in front of our customer. We do some branding. We've, we've done some billboards. Static billboards are, are more, I'm definitely more in favor compared to the digital billboards. The mm. digital billboards it can be frustrating to me at times. You drive by and you're not up there it's and you're paying that. It, yeah. it must have rotated today. Right, exactly. So um, we do some static billboards. We do a lot of bus stations. So that's part of the branding. Um, of course, wrapping the trucks is huge. Um, anybody who doesn't wrap their truck, I mean, you're really missing out because that's, that's the most inexpensive way you could advertise because it's a one-time fee uh, to pay to wrap your truck. So we do that. We, uh, we did some TV a couple of years ago or last year. Um, that's a tough one. You know, again, that's branding. It's tough to track. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, we're doing some radio this year. Heard some good comments. Um, we have a radio commercial out right now. So uh, we're trying a little bit of that. Um, and of course, then our online presence, uh, which is handled by, um, you know, Plumber and SEO. Uh, and I, I think I said it before. Um, I couldn't be happier. Um, I always say this, as long as you're not in my area, um, <laughs> here, call Plumber and SEO because they're, they're going to hook you up. And um, I'll tell you, if uh, you, you, have a, you have a problem with anything, you just pick up the phone and they're right on it. And that, that's what I really uh, like about Josh and, and Dean and their whole team because of the, the job that they do for us. Uh, it's amazing. Um, you know, with the, all the PPC campaigns out there, you know, you just, you basically you could buy your work, you know. So, but you got to, you have to be hooked up with a company that's going to manage it and bid it for you, and that's what they do. That's what Plumber Institute does. So they don't just do your SEO work; they, they manage your PPC along with social media, and you know we, we do some Facebook stuff, and uh, you know uh, this, the online presence has been fantastic uh, mm -hmm. through uh, Josh and his team. You can see. So one thing I'll say. So I think for for you and, and for our listeners that are trying to say, you know, what is it that that's making this work so well for for Greg? I think it started with a really good brand. So you've got this 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 great branding. You get your 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 shirt on with the logo. I spent the day here at their facility, and everybody's walking around with their nice logoed shirt on. When you pull up to their building, Greg's made a, ma a major investment, not just in a in a facility, uh, but in a in a showroom where you can see baths, you can see kitchens, you can you can you know see it's a really professional operation. Nice signage on the front of the building. Thank you. Uh, beautiful trucks, a fleet of really nice, high-quality, clean, wrapped trucks. And somewhere on this episode, whether it's embedded into this video or in, in, the, in the show notes, we'll, we'll provide you guys with some pictures of this so you get some context uh, that there's no way you could come in contact with Schuler Service and not feel impressed and feel like it's a world-class operation. Um, and I think that, that really helps with, with the growth. Um, pulling in, we flew in to... Um, uh, Philadelphia, and then we drove into Allentown. I know at least at two places I saw the billboards. I didn't hear the radio ad, right, okay. but right. um, but you know he's made a massive <laughs> effort to be omnipresent in in this yeah. marketplace. And the internet marketing piece of it just it it, it ties in right because they've seen the, they've seen the billboard ads, they've heard the company, they've seen the trucks all over town. They go to run the search, they see them in the paid ads, they see them in the organic listings. And it's just a no-brainer, you know, you do take the risk on one of the other guys or do you go with the really the quality company that you've seen all over the place? I think that's that's a big piece. Would you agree? For oh, absolutely. I, you know, and you've always told me this, you know, and that's why we even started off with just doing um, the organic, you know, this, the, the SEO work um, and then jumped in the PPC com campaign. But it's a wonderful thing when you try for yourself and I clear my cash and I go, Allentown Plumber, McCunchy Plumber, and you're first in the PPC, and you're first in the maps, and you're first in organic. That's a that's a pretty pleasant sight, you know. Yeah. It makes it basically okay. I'm done. I don't need to really check anymore until maybe tomorrow or the next <laughs> day. So tell. it's like, it, it, but it's but it's it's just great stuff. And uh, when you're th when you're number one in all three, you know, there's no guarantee that you could be there, but uh, it does happen often with us. And uh, I'm I'm real proud to say that's uh, the, the results of uh, the work that the Plumber CEO does. So thanks, Josh. Absolutely. So I mean, for those of you that are listening, you know. It, the more successful people that we interview on this program, they, they tend to have diverse marketing mixes, right? They're not just doing internet. They're not just doing direct mail. They're doing a little bit of a lot of, of that stuff. And as you grow and as you look to get to the next level, those are the things you really need to be focused on. Uh, you mentioned the, the direct mail follow-up that you do after 
Um, do you mind talking about who does that for you? Because it's also always sure. good to know kind of like who are the companies that you're actually using to mm -hmm. the extent that you're comfortable sharing that, that sure. type of information. Sure. Um, um, and matter of fact, that was a lead through you. And his name is Brian Cashkiven from G4 Marketing. They do a wonderful job with it. Um, basically, what, what happens is uh, we, you turn in your, your work that was paid for that week. And each week, then they send out a mailer, uh, basically a thank you card with a $25 gift card. Unless we work for them in the past, and it becomes a thanks again card. Oh, so okay. thanks again card, All and right, it's so a $30. That's cool. Yeah, so, and it's a different card that we send because we track that. So once a $25 gift certificate, then thanks again is a $30 gift certificate. Like, so they gave you something a little bit, a little little bit, bit more bit nicer. Yeah, exactly. So, and then at that point, if they refer anybody to, they have a whole referral program. Um, when they refer somebody, they get a $50 cash check too for referring somebody. So, oh, nice. um, and also, Brian does a lot of uh, um, email marketing for us too as well. So once we gather all those emails uh, for all the customers because basically we have to get the emails now because we send an email out the night before. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a great way of getting email addresses by saying, hey, we're going to send a picture of our tech. Um, can we have your email address? A lot better than saying, hey, can we have your email address because we want to market to you. So right. basically we said for security purposes, we'd like to have your email address. So once you capture those email addresses, it's great because monthly, you could send them a monthly digital newsletter and Brian from G4 does that as well. And he does a really good job at that and uh, seems to be working. Um, so that's Brian Kaskowski and from G4 Marketing Group out of um, Coral Gables. Yep. You look them up at G4 Marketing. You just run that on a search. Um, and it, it is a pretty impressive program if you think about it. You can you can always send a thank you note. You can always send emails in-house. Mm -hmm. But can you talk a little bit about why you would choose to, to outsource something like that as <laughs> opposed to printing off the thank you cards and, and you know, stuffing them yourself and yeah. putting the stamp? and Well, if you want to do three, four hundred, five hundred mailers a month, <laughs> then uh, hire somebody in-house to do it. But it's just not cost-effective. Right. I mean, it, they, they have it so... I mean, they're specializing in what they do. Um, he developed this program, um, and it's just, it's wonderful. I mean, honestly, I always thought I should be thanking every customer for every job that we do, mm -hmm. and it's a good feeling knowing that we do that. Now, it is, uh, the way they make the letters, it's pretty cool. They're handwritten on the outside, but, you know, it's, it's still, even though that customer may get five, six of them over a period of their lifetime of, of us being their plumber, um, it is a, a form type letter, but still, it's a nice mention, and mm -hmm. at least they know that we do care, and we're sending something else out um, in the future for them to use a coupon for the next service visit. So yeah, so I, I think it's a powerful insight for you guys, whether whether you use G four or you do it yourself. Just imagine if a thank you card went to every customer yeah. after every service call. Do you think that would have an increase in the probability that they they want to do business with you again, or that they're going to refer you? I think the logical answer is, is yes. And so whether you do it on your own or you connect with a company like G4, and there's other services that do it as well, it's kind of a no-brainer. Right. And, and the hard part of it is you start to feel like, wait a minute, I already marketed to get the customer. Mm -hmm. Now I've got the customer. Now I've got to spend whatever it is to, to send a thank you card. I see the potential for it to help, but it might also just be a wasted expense. Can you speak to any tangible return? From that type of activity or yeah um okay. it's 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 phenomenal i mean i don't have numbers right in front of me but i will tell you we get oh it's amazing we probably get at least um upwards of 50 uh thank you cards you know the, the gift cards back a month oh, so they're cashing those those things yeah, in yeah okay. yeah so they're they're actually yeah so now those aren't the 50 from the previous month right. it, comes, so it, it takes a period of time yeah time. sure so the program has just grown and grown and grown and grown so the return on the investment is phenomenal absolutely so. awesome uh, I would certainly recommend it because, hey, if Josh could get us the customers, wh why don't we have somebody retain them? And that's sort of how why you hooked up with uh, with Brian from G4 to, mm -hmm. to help us out. So we do a little bit more customer retention um, along with uh, getting the customer. Because we all know how expensive it is to get a customer, so let's keep them. Yeah. So. And so there, there's really two nuggets there. There's the send direct mail. Don't just send them email, but send them email as well. Right. And so it's not only are they getting a thank you card in the mail, they're getting emails from you. Um, is it like a once a month thing? Is it, you know? It is a once a month thing. And the way Brian has it set up, um, or the G4 team, is you could answer, you know, you know how sometimes it's annoying getting email. The one nice thing is they could click on it and unsubscribe if they wanted to. We don't have a lot of that, but we do get those notifications that people do. Mm -hmm. So it does give them that option so you're not really getting, you know, upsetting a customer. Because yeah. we all know how sometimes I uh, get these emails. But, you know, okay, delete it. But you know what? Even if they're deleting it, they're still getting that message. Shuler service, Shuler service, Shuler service. It's continually to come out every month. I think, you know, just because it's that it's it's always on their mind then. Even if they do delete it, they keep they keep seeing that email month after month, even mm -hmm. if they don't read it. So 
Yeah. I, yeah. Powerful, powerful stuff. Things that if you just do a couple of the things she's talking about on today's call, you're going to see an increase in revenues and sales. You know, one of the things that, that impresses me about your company is online there's something like 660 plus reviews from happy customers across mm -hmm. the internet. Um, and so obviously service culture is a big piece of that. What tools do you use to help drive that type of online review activity? That's a great question. Um, I think, well, one of the things why we have such great reviews and so many reviews is because of our world-class service, I call mm -hmm. it. Um, yeah. But we do some in-house stuff that's uh, pretty cool. Okay. Um, we do review skins, we call it. And basically, um, we used to pen, uh, pay out $10 cash reward for every review that you get. Nice. So now what we do is a little bit different. We take the, the amount of reviews from the previous month, and we basically... Um, it becomes an, uh, a skin, so we, and then we split that up. First, first prize gets a 50%, second prize gets 30, and, and tw third prize gets 20%. So it's pretty cool because the more reviews you add to it that month, then of course the pot's the bigger. bigger the pot. pot. Exactly. So we've had some pretty big pots. We have some pretty big winners. You know, somebody walking away at three, four hundred dollars um, uh, cash reward at the end of the month. So you for gamify. Reviews. You gamify we this get, yes, review process. Make it exactly. So we do make a game out of it. And they love it. You know, we, we re read the reviews at our weekly um, meetings, and uh, it's great. And we just basically keep a tally here in our in our training room, and it works out really well. Nice. Um, yeah. And so, it, well. and so it's a weekly meeting that happens. You read the reviews from the week. Mm -hmm. Everybody's, like all the technicians that are talking with the customers are, are kind of involved in this process. They know that there's going to be um, a, a, you know, kind of a, a reading of the reviews, something to say, hey, I did good in right. front of their peers. And then there, there's also a reward. Of the and it's kind of different. It's not just a reward for one guy. It's a, it's a skins yes. kind of setup. So they all get a little. Not all of them, but the winners they have a chance to get a piece. Right. Of it. And if they're not in the running, what's good about it is, is, is they, they still go for the review because they're just adding pot to the next month. So yep. they're adding adding to the pot. But uh, one nice tool that Josh you offer, and I'm pretty sure you're you're aware of this, is you give us cards to hand out on mm -hmm. how to get that Google review. Yep. So these guys do who are trying to win the skin spot every every month. They, they're using those Google review cards and handing them out to their customers. It nice. basically explains how to get on Google, how to post a review. Just another tool that uh, Josh and his team uh, does for us here at Shula Services. And that's something we've always recommended is to have both a, a, a kind of a digital and an analog a aspect to, to automate the review request process. So you're talking about, hey, thanks, Mr. Customer. Appreciate your business. You know, here's, you know, if you would go ahead and write us a review, here's mm -hmm. a link where you can go and do that. Right. Yep. Absolutely. It seems to work, you know, I mean, because honestly, I don't think if you don't, if you don't ask for a review, I think the percentages are that you're not going to get a review. It's much lower. Right. So if you're asking and you build that connection with that customer, and this is something we train all the time, it's building that connection with the customer. So as, soon you, as soon as you walk in the door, why not then on the way out, ask them and say, hey, are you happy with the work that I did? Ask their permission, hand them a review card, say, this is how you do it. Or you can simply go on our website and do it. And it just works, and I think that's why we're killing it when it comes to reviews mm -hmm. in this in this in our market. I mean, we're we're like double, I think, of uh, our second. But yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's which awesome. is uh, cool stuff. Yeah. So, so do you send an email request review as well? Is that anywhere in this process at this point? You know, John, that's a great, uh, great, great question because I, I think we need to do that. Um, mm -hmm. That's something we don't do. Okay. Um, but uh, I believe through our software, I think there's a, we have the ability to do that mm -hmm. through, through Service Titan. Yep, yeah, baked so. into Service Titan, yep. baked into Nearby Now. Right. Yep. That that automatic review yeah. request. And nearby now, that's another thing we didn't even talk about yet. But, mm -hmm. uh, that's another great program, too. Um, and we pay, we spiff for nearby now. So each of the technicians, they either if they do a check-in or they take a picture and check it in, they get a dollar per. So each job, they can get another $2 if they check in nearby now and send a picture. Um, so that creates that, the... That creates the activity, mm -hmm. the incentive. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. And the nearby now, probably, yeah, I mean, you could explain it probably better than I can, but the fantastic program, too, as Dude. well. That, that's awesome. So one question that I know that... that I'll, people might have as they're watching this or listening to it. Um, they love the idea of, of rewarding the technicians, of, of giving feedback on the reviews. How do you know, like how do you track all these reviews that are happening um, online? Well, the reviews, um, we just basically get off the website. Yep. So we could go on there, read them. Uh, we, we mark them down as, as they come in. It's uh, manually to, 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 for the skins game. Um, as far as the, the check-ins and the, and the pictures that are sent in, they get sent into a... Uh, into a website that we developed. Mm -hmm. um, we even do stickers. Uh, and it's another form of marketing. 
Uh, there's maybe six different stickers, one being water heater, garbage disposal, expansion tank, a heating system, what have you. And it just basically says, we'll pay you $65 for this water heater. So if they stick that on there, they take a picture of that, that sticker, um, then they also get a dollar for that. So that could add up. They could get literally in somebody's home, they could get at least five, six dollars worth of stickers each time. Their check ins could be another two. They get a reviewer, there's ten dollars right there. There's some spiff so, money coming. Yes, exactly. But it's part of the marketing. Um, yep. So it's part of our marketing budget. And, you know, that water heater eventually, if it's ten years from now, even if they put it on a brand new heater and that water heater 10, 11, 12 years from now needs to be replaced, who wouldn't call you when they said, hey, I'll, I'll pay you $65 for that leaking water heater? So yeah. it's just another form of marketing that we do. So it works out Watch well. Stuff. How do, you, how do you track that the guy actually placed the, placed the sticker on the, on the equipment? Yep, great question. So they put the sticker on the equipment, they, take it, they have to take a picture of it, and they send it to a, spe a designated website, and then that, that's, the, that's how it gets controlled. And then at the end of the month, we tell it up. We have one that's like, you know, 60, 70, 80 stickers. You know, it's an $80 a little spiff at the end of the month. Yeah. Who wouldn't want to do that? So, and then the, we have the check-ins for nearby now. Those are worth a dollar and then a dollar for the, for, the, uh, um, for the photos as well on nearby now. So. So there must be somebody on the team that's responsible for tracking all of this and reporting it. Is that a service manager? Is that a office manager? Like who does that to get, because it doesn't just happen, right? You have yeah. to look at reports and you have to tally things. Right. Uh, great question. Um, I know somebody on our team does it. It's service manager, office manager. Um, somebody does somebody, it. Somebody back in, yeah, in the office. Uh, I just know um, that my office manager, she gives a, a full report on a spreadsheet to me to look at it each month before those commissions go out or the spiffs go out. Um, so it's well tracked uh, okay. and do, do a great job of it too. So Very, very, yeah. good, very cool stuff. And so, and so what he's talking about is kind of the second level. A lot of, a lot of you guys listening to this, um, you know that reviews are important. You know that you know incentivizing your guys is, is a piece of it, uh, and maybe you've started using Nearby Now, or you started using Review Buzz, you started using other some other platform, and maybe it's working, maybe it's not, maybe it could be working better. What Greg does is he's built into his business process. Look, guys, we're going to reward the activity that we want, right? Which is for you to go provide great service, to plant the seed that they're going to get a request for review. And then really kind of incent get those customers to write those positive reviews. We're talking about 600 plus online reviews. And it's not just because he used a tool. It's because he built it into his process. And I think the, the most powerful part is that he, he's built it into his monthly meeting rhythm where they have an incentive. They get recognition in front of their peers. And that's, that's really why they, they go above and beyond. Yeah, right? it's huge. I agree, Josh. Um, it's not even just the money. It's it's that recognition in front of their peers, and mm -hmm. you said it, and that's that just, yeah, that's exactly right. Um, you know, who doesn't want to be recognized in front of their peers? You yep. know, it's like, heck, you know, you're being told you're doing a great job. You know, um, it's great that your peers are hearing it as well, and and that's why we do that on on a weekly basis. You know, read the reviews and and talk about the even when it comes at the end of the month, we'll talk about the amount of uh, check-ins that uh, one particular tech or two or three particular techs have. You know, because again, it could add up after a month. And all these check-in type of things where you check in on nearby now with the photos and everything, it's all that relevant, relevant, fresh content being continually added to the site. Mm -hmm. And you taught me this, you know, that's, that's what the, the Google algorithms look for. They look for fresh, relevant content. So if you're constantly having your text send in photos or check-ins, hey, I just repaired a toilet and they took a picture of it, it's constantly updating itself on the website, which work, works. I think that was the whole principle behind Nearby Now when it, yep. uh, when it was developed, so yeah. good stuff. Yeah, so that, I mean, that's another tool he's talking about there is Nearby Now. We talked about it a couple times. Um, it, it's built for the technicians to have installed on their phones. So the di idea is as they're going about their day and um, Schuler Services serves the Lehigh Valley in, in um, Pennsylvania, so they'll go to Allentown or McCungie or Whitehall and as the technician is at that home, let's say in Whitehall, they take out the phone, they hit the button to check in, they type a description, they snap a photo, that information automatically syncs to the Whitehall page on the website and they can push a request for review. And so just to kind of bridge the gap, that helps a lot with local SEO, like you just said. And so that's another tool you might want to look into if you're, if you're looking to build some momentum from a local local ranking perspective. Right. Yeah, that works fantastic. I think it uh, really helps with the, has to help with the SEO because it is the, the relevant and, uh, you know, it's relevant and it's fresh content and it's always there every day. You know, if you have, even if you have two techs, but if you have nine techs, you imagine if they're on an average of two to three jobs a day and they're all checking in, that content is just so heavy, it just continues just to grow every day. And mm -hmm. that really, I think it really helps. Yeah, no, no doubt. So let's, I mean, let's talk about, um, it, within internet marketing, 
Are there any online directories that you that you pay for, like Home Advisor or Yelp <laughs> or Angie's List? Are you playing any of those those games? Zero. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's something I haven't. Um, I got a little bit involved in Angie's List way back when, but uh, other than that, um, the Home Advisor calls come in weekly. Uh -huh. uh, but yeah, I have not to answer okay. your question, so I, I don't have a whole lot of information on those uh, yep. uh, in that avenue. So I find a lot of a lot of the the companies that 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 watch the show, um, they they played with Home Advisor. Some of them do well with it. Some of them don't. What we do find is the leads that come from Home Advisor tend to be the lowest quality. Yeah. Um, and so if you've got leads coming in from other sources, especially brand recognition sources, um, you know, your close rate's higher, your cost per lead is lower. Right. And it just at some point it might not even make sense to continue to play in those in those right. games. Yeah. Yeah, good point. Oh, and so you pulled out of home, uh, Angie's list altogether yeah. at this point? Well, I mean we're there. I mean everybody as a service provider, I think if somebody posts you're an Angie you're not necessarily a member, but you're up there, you know, right. so you could find reviews on Yelp, Angie's Lists, you know, because we're there, just like yellowpages.com, those reviews are there because they're posting reviews to their site. But no, we're not, we don't do any paid advertising, if that was the question. Yeah, that's, so that's we, the question. Yeah, so. so we don't work with Home Advisor directly. You know, <laughs> until I guess, you know, we hire enough people to, to, to handle the work that we have, why should I go that route mm -hmm. when, uh, again, your, your cost per lead goes up and, you uh, your your and that type of customer sometimes the, the closing rates aren't as well either. You I think you pointed that out. So um, maybe there are maybe that is the type of customer that you shouldn't be going after because maybe they're not your style of customer where they don't appreciate. Uh, maybe they're looking for the best price, uh, for example, mm -hmm. rather than valuing the service and seeing the value of what we do here at Schuler Service. So right. um, so again, and and I think that's a good point too, Josh. I think every every business owner or marketing. You know, manager for any kind of company has to realize that all customers are not a fit for you. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So it's sort of like, what tar who are you targeting? It, it, it sort of goes hand in hand because you're not going to target a certain customer that doesn't value your service. Um, right. Because so we may not be the fit for everybody, but we're a fit for a lot of people. Though I can tell you that. Yeah. Um, great, great insights. Uh, One of the things you mentioned a little bit earlier was you track everything, right? You mm -hmm. you, you send out these direct mail, and you can see you know it's working or it's not. Um, what what tools do you use to track to, to see what's what's generating return and what's not? Well, originally we did a lot of most of my tracking when I first bought the business was done through coupons. So okay. basically, every type of direct mail piece had a different coupon, and then we would mm -hmm. track it through my accounting system, not through the software, uh, you know, the, our our operating software, which is Service Titan, but basically through my accounting software. So I'd be able to see the amount of dollars coming back in coupons, which would then in turn tell me how many coupons are coming back, it's working. What it wouldn't do then would tell me the amount of revenue that it was generating. Right. So um, now you could take an average per cost lead for each service call and you could do the math real quick. But now with the new software that uh, you know most service uh, in-home service providers are using, I would think they're using some type of an operating software, Service Titan has that ability to do that. So basically that's all done through phone numbers. So if we have 40 some odd phone numbers now, mm -hmm. each of those phone numbers on each piece of uh, direct mail, um, you know, from any form of marketing, um, there's a different phone number for whatever it may be. So that phone number comes in and then directly goes to that marketing venue in, within Service Titan and basically then could track the amount of revenue generated from that phone number. Nice. So, and so but, that's working for you? It's working, yeah. Yeah, it's working well. It's not perfected yet, I must say. Um, it's a work in progress. But, you know, what's interesting is when you have a marketing piece that works, I really have found that it does work and it hasn't gone away now maybe because i've only been doing this for four years but it seems like once you get a piece of direct mail that's working it, it, it does work and i still track my coupons as well so i always have that follow-up but a better way of tracking is done through the phone numbers going through your software when the phone's answered it's putting that uh, revenue stream right into you know whatever venue it may be so if you want to go in one direct mail piece you can see the amount of revenue that was generated from that direct piece so there are some quirks in it, you know. You, you have to rely and train on your CSRs to put it into the right um, bucket. Uh, yeah, exactly. Um, obviously, your 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 website's going to get many more because you're going to lead people in your branding to generate to your website. Mm -hmm. um, so that happens as well. And plus, I think because of Google, and you could probably uh, tell me if I'm wrong or right here, but the phone number a lot of times that we have, our main phone number is on our website. And that's not a trackable number, but that needs to be on there for Google purposes, right? For so in, for, in Google Maps specifically, when someone types in Allentown Plumber, mm -hmm. and your company number is on Maps, and they dial that, which a lot of people do. 
Uh, at this point, it's not a track number in Service Titan just because we didn't want to port your main company number into, into Service Titan. Right. And we don't want to change the number on Google Maps because consistency of your name, address, phone number on Google, Yahoo, Bing, City Search, and Jesus List is a major factor in how you rank right. in, in, in Maps. Um, so that, that tool is, is Service Titan, which some of you use, some of you don't, some of you have heard of. Um, a lot of the people that have been on this show use Service Titan, and really the, the beauty of it is you can, dis, you can set up specific numbers for all the different marketing channels and then dispatch your guys straight through that same system, yep. bill straight through that system, yep. so you know I spent whatever, I generated a certain number of calls, and then even be able to know how much revenue those calls generated. Right. And so that's, that's really the, the, the beauty and the promise of the whole Service Titan Absolutely. Um, platform. Yeah. So, um, Service Titan is still amazing. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm sure you uh, have been on Service Titan. It's oh, just yeah. a, it's amazing software. And the beauty of Service Titan is that they're, if you come out with a recommendation, they listen to you. You know, it's sort of like your firm, Josh. You know, hey, this isn't working. We don't see something here. We give you, a, and then you work with us, you know. And Service Titan is that type of uh, a company where they will work with us um, on certain things that we recommend. And uh, they're always coming out because it is web-based, so they're always updating. Mm -hmm. um, it just it just works. It's a, It was one of the better business decisions that I ever made is going with Service Titan for, nice. their, for their, uh, the software that they have. Offer it's great. Very cool. Yeah, and I, I we're, we're strategic partners with with Service Titan at this point. I, I highly recommend it uh, for the companies that are the right size, that are the, mm -hmm. the, the right the right fit. Um, so let, let's move to um, you know what out of all of the different marketing that you do, and this might sound self serving, but it's not what's intended. <laughs> what what tends to generate the most leads for you at this point? Well, um, <laughs> certainly our internet marketing. I mean, I, I and really. Any plumber is kidding themselves if, if they don't think that's the case. But people, will, they just search, and they, you know, that's what they do. And they're going to look at reviews, and they're going to, they know who you are before you get to the house. So, mm -hmm. um, you better have an online presence, and you better have some good reviews because yep. if not, you're going to lose every time. I mean, it's just, you know, and and the reviews come with training, um, and that's what you got to do. You know, you got to train your guys so they get we get great reviews, and then on top of that, on how to get that review from the customer. So. To answer the question, it definitely, um, and it's it, hands down uh, from all my marketing reports through Service Titan that my um, organic is number one every month, hands down, every time. I think for most plumbers, they would probably say that. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah. Yeah, it, it's, it's, it's pretty much, we all know, you know, you need a water heater. If we're not showing up on somebody's phone, if they need a water heater in Irma Kanji, um, then we're going to lose out. So, because they're going to usually pick those top three to show up on the phone. So, mm -hmm. but. Um, that's what you help us with, though, Josh. This is great. So we better show up on those first three on the phone. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Are there are there any marketing efforts that you did in the past that you you find just isn't generating ROI at this point that you kind of pulled away from? Yeah, um, the TV was the one I mentioned, mm -hmm. um, only because it's tough to track and it's not. You know, you pay some good dollars for some TV advertising, and uh, you know we were on Monday Night Football last year. But I did it more for branding. Um, everything I do um, has, I think any form of marketing, unless you're strictly branding, you, you have to track it because you better check your ROI because why would you want to spend money that, on something that's not working? So yeah. the, the things I sort of bet, can't go in and out of um, would be I, the three big branding ones to me would be radio, TV, and billboards. And those are things that I really can't track. So I sort of rotate them. All right. I did uh, billboards and then I ran into uh, TV. Um, then I went back into some radio and then back into billboards again. So mm -hmm. I'm sort of making a little bit of a rotation there. Okay. Um, ask me why. I don't know. But uh, <laughs> I guess because something filled the budget in, you know. All right. So I'll put some my branding. Here. Yeah, put right. Some right. So um, I've never done all three of those the billboards, TV, and radio at once. But um, maybe that day will come too if it's in the budget. So. Okay. Excellent. So what, I guess. You, you're a tremendously successful guy. You've seen lots of growth in your in your company. You know, obviously, learning is a big piece of that. What what training organizations or groups have you been a part of that have helped you along the way? 
Well, first of all, our local PHCC, um, you get a lot of great information. And that could be a little tricky because a lot of times you're dealing with your competitors. And of course, you don't want to be giving trade secrets out, you know, between that's, your competitors. Good point. Good point. However, um, the enhanced group of the PHC, you know, you get into your state and national, um, especially in the national, they have the enhanced group of PHCC is the QSC, or quality service contractors. And there's a lot of other groups out there. But I've latched on to QSC since I became a business owner. And I'll tell you um, that the networking alone is invaluable. Mm -hmm. um, well, that's how we hooked up with Plumber SEO through, mm -hmm. through the QSC. And uh, that was down in Baltimore in the summer of 2013. And um, uh, right after I bought the business, and that's when we started the website. And it's been, you know, all uphill from there. But uh, to answer your question, uh, th that QSC is really the group that I've really, um, I'll be honest with you, I've learned so much from them. Mm -hmm. um, I love to learn from other people. Why, why reinvent the wheel when you could learn from other people's mistakes? You know, yeah. and, and that's the way I uh, have looked at it in that way. And it's been uh, very beneficial to myself, not just personally, company, and the, I think even employees to have benefited as a whole from me joining QSC. Yeah, so that's quality service contractors. It's, a, it's like an elite division of the PHCC. Um, somewhere in the show notes, we'll have a link to it, but if you search Plumbing QH, uh, QSC, mm -hmm. you'll probably come oh, yeah. across it, and it's a, it's a, it's a peer group of about 150. Yeah, they're growing. Um, they're growing once again. Range. Yeah, they are. I think it's, uh, I think it's over 200, maybe 200. not. Yeah, but um, yeah, they're always uh, um, growing and recruiting. And you know, I think what happens is once you join it, you don't see too many, uh, too many of the plumbers dropping out of it. Too mm -hmm. many members. Um, they they, they stay, tend to stick around uh, because there's, again, there's so many valuable things in joining a peer group. Again, why reinvent the wheel when you can learn from, from other people? Yeah. I mean, that's the way I look at it. And if you're, if you're out there running a plumbing or HVAC business, at whatever level that you're at today, and you're not involved in one of these groups, QSC, Nextar, mm -hmm. Service mm -hmm. Round, there's lots of good groups. Um, you're, you're, you're making your life a lot harder than it needs yes, to be. No good point. Um, you know, there's other people that are running more successful companies than you that know things that you don't know. And if you plug into them, I found that the, the members are inc incredibly generous, yes. willing to share. And everybody that I've seen plug into an organization like this has seen noticeable momentum in their, in their businesses. Absolutely. And so, you know, get outside of your little vacuum, get outside of your truck and, and spend some time with other really successful people. And um, you know, Greg's in QSC, there's other people that have been on this program that are part of QSC, and it's a group I, I highly highly recommend. Yeah, absolutely, as well. absolutely, good point. So in, in kind of closing, you've shared some tremendous insights. Um, you know, are there any other nuggets of wisdom that you would wanna share with that plumbing or HVAC business owner that's just you know, looking mm. to go to the next level? Yeah, I guess if I would have to say anything, um, build a good culture. Uh, build a good culture within your team, um, which becomes respect. You know, you know, you know, you're never going to get respect from anybody if you don't respect them. So you got to respect all your employees to the very end. Treat them well. Treat your good ones well. Uh, on performance, if they, uh, take care of them. You know, you don't. We all know how tough it's to recruit too. Getting getting good employees. Mm -hmm. Employees. So when you do get them, take care of them. Um, okay. So if there's anything. Um, yeah, in closing to say, I think that's probably the single handily the most important is to build a good team with great culture that you just got to have a lot of fun, but when it comes down to business, you can still get the business, but still have fun doing it. And uh, if you can do that um, and, and get that culture, I think your life is going to be a lot easier because <laughs> we all know how a disgruntled employee is. I mean, it's, that's just mm. not fun. You want to keep them. You can't keep everybody happy. We all know that. But you know what? You, you, you could keep them, you know, that they want to come to work and they enjoy it. They feel respected. They feel like they're being noticed. Um, that is the main thing you really need to do as a business owner, I believe. And I think in any business is just have the utmost respect for your, for your own employees. So. Excellent. Well, I mean, it's been, it's been another great, great episode. Lots of great information shared. Greg, thanks so much for your generosity and your willingness to, to share kind of the, the secrets to, to your success. <laughs> I look forward to meeting you again maybe in another year or two down sure. the road and see yeah. where you're at then and see what's working for you as, as you continue to expand. Thank you for joining us on this, this episode of the Plumbing and HVAC Marketing Show. Um, you know, definitely go to plumbingmarketing.net to subscribe for the podcast so you can get alerted as new episodes are posted. Um, if you get value from this program and from these types of interviews, just take a minute, post a review either on the website or on iTunes or 
whatever platform you happen to be using to consume this content and go out there, grow your company, take it to the next level, and we'll look forward to seeing you on an upcoming episode of the Plumbing and HVAC Marketing Show. We'll see you next time. Thanks, Greg. Thanks, Josh. The Plumbing Marketing Profits Podcast. Interviews with million-dollar-plus plumbing and HVAC business owners on how they market and grow their companies in today's economy. Hear directly from the most successful leaders in your business and discover what they are doing to keep their phone ringing, trucks running, and businesses booming.